Around three years ago, NASA launched the Ingenuity helicopter, which eventually touched down on Mars early the next year. Since 2021, NASA has been consistently flying the helicopter, trying new and more ambitious routes each time. Just yesterday on the 5th, Ingenuity was scheduled for its 50th flight, expected to travel more than 1,000 feet or around 306 meters in total. The whole purpose of this helicopter was to determine if powered, controlled flight at the Red Planet was possible. If this were the case, it would open up a lot of future opportunities as NASA sets its sights on sending humans to the planet. In the over two years Ingenuity has been on the surface, not only has it shown that powered flight is possible, but it also has given the agency some new ideas. What makes its test so impressive is the fact that flight on Mars is extremely challenging, because the Red Planet has significantly lower gravity and a very thin atmosphere. Here I'll go more in depth into this historic 50th flight, what exactly Ingenuity has been up to, why its results are so important, and more. Since Ingenuity's first ever powered flight, NASA has been keeping track of practically every metric possible and providing that information to the public. This flight log reveals years of work and a few important patterns. Starting Sol 58 and going all the way to Sol 752, there have been a total of 49 confirmed flights. To get a better idea of how far this helicopter has actually flown, in total it traveled more than 11,000 meters or close to 37,000 feet. Its highest ever altitude was 16 meters off the ground, or around 52 feet, and the longest flight was just under one and a half hours long. These numbers are very impressive and have given NASA a huge boost in confidence regarding powered flight on the Red Planet. In addition to providing valuable insights on the operation of the helicopter itself, Ingenuity has also been working closely with the Perseverance rover. The Perseverance rover spent the first two Earth years of its mission on Mars driving and sampling within the Jezero crater. With this important work out of the way, the rover science team eagerly turned its attention to the prospect of new and exciting discoveries in the unexplored area of the Delta Top. To reach these areas as quickly as possible, the scientists planned an aggressive driving campaign up the River Delta. The first stop in this race up the Delta would be the Tinbu region, home to some of the most geologically interesting outcrops of the Delta. This fresh terrain represented a golden opportunity for Ingenuity to prove its worth to the rover science mission. Providing the rover team with recon images just a few days before the rover reaches a site gives scientists significantly more time to determine their exploration priorities, and gives rover planners advance notice of any unexpected terrain. With the fading of the Martian winter, Ingenuity had enough power to fly hundreds of meters ahead of the rover with each flight, and deliver on the promise of being a real science scout. This being said, Ingenuity is by no means perfect, and there were some complications during this process. For one, unlike the relatively flat and unobstructed crater floor, the canyon-like river delta presented some serious communication challenges between the rover and the helicopter, meaning that the helicopter could never hope to get more than a few hundred meters ahead of the rover. This effectively nullified any speed advantage Ingenuity had over the rover. Second, unlike the Jezero crater floor, the rover would not be loitering in any spot for more than a few souls, meaning that if the helicopter ever fell behind, there would be precious little time to catch up before falling out of communications range. Third, the helicopter is required to maintain a wide keepout zone above the rover during flight. Normally this isn't a problem, but in the narrow channels of the river delta, it effectively means that Ingenuity doesn't have enough space to pass the rover if it ever falls behind. The end result of these constraints was to put the helicopter in the precarious mode of making short but frequent flights, time to stay just ahead of the rover as it drove. Considering Ingenuity's original purpose and design, it was still doing an impressive job scouting for the rover. As NASA gets more comfortable and pushes the helicopter to its limits, we can expect to see more unique applications such as this. With Ingenuity's successful results thus far, NASA has begun working on even more ambitious projects that have to do with flying on Mars. The first is named the Mars Science Helicopter. This massive helicopter features six rotors and is said to be around the same size as the rover, which is close to a car. The Mars Science Helicopter, or MSH, task is the next evolutionary step for the Martian rotorcraft at JPL. The key focus is to develop the technology needed to deploy science payloads between 0.5 and 2 kilograms on rotorcraft platforms at the surface of Mars. Designing and proving how science payloads can be deployed, recovered, integrated, and operated on a dynamically and computationally representative rotorcraft will be critical in expanding a new frontier for Martian scientific exploration. In terms of its actual application, NASA envisions fleets of these large helicopters flying around and carrying payloads to areas of Mars that they haven't been able to access before. Another project that we could see not long from now is a sample recovery helicopter. The sample recovery helicopters are specifically modeled after the successful Ingenuity Mars helicopter. These specialized rotorcraft would be a secondary method of sample retrieval for the NASA-ESA Mars Sample Return Campaign. 
Currently, the Perseverance rover, which has already been collecting a diverse set of scientifically curated samples for potential safe return to Earth, is planned as the primary method of delivering samples to the sample retrieval lander. The sample recovery helicopters would expand on Ingenuity's design, adding wheels and gripping capabilities to pick up curated sample tubes left on the surface by Perseverance and transport them to the sample retrieval lander. It's important to make clear that this specific helicopter is not planned to be the primary method of retrieving samples on Mars. Current plans call for the Perseverance rover to carry sample tubes directly to the sample retrieval lander. However, should the rover become unable to deliver its onboard samples, the helicopters would be prepared to collect alternate sample tubes previously left on the surface by Perseverance. In this case, the helicopters would take off and land at predetermined sites, or helipads, that have been found suitable and safe and would use in-flight and map-based navigation to reach the known locations of sample tubes left on the surface. Each helicopter would follow a four-day procedure to recover sample tubes. Day one, fly to an area near the sample tube. Day two, drive close to the tube and pick it up. Day three, fly back to an area near the sample retrieval lander. And finally, day four, drive close to the lander and drop the tube in the workspace of the lander's sample transfer arm. These future helicopter designs are being created based on new information and tests performed with Ingenuity. Focusing back on Ingenuity's recent work with Perseverance, despite the problems, NASA was mostly successful. The race began on Sol 697 during Flight 42, with the helicopter flying past Rocky Top and landing near Jenkins Gap. Out of the gate, it became apparent just how hard this process was going to be. Even the modest distance covered by Flight 42 had taken NASA out of communications range. Attempts to bring back useful science images from the flight resulted in nothing but images that just showed the helicopter was still alive. It took another four souls before the rover was close enough to restore communications and get any useful data back to the rover. By that time, the rover was practically on top of the helicopter and another urgent flight was needed. Unfortunately, the flight data also showed a curious and potentially dangerous issue with the landing hazard mitigation system, used successfully since Flight 39. The team worked around the clock to understand the issue, giving the all clear with just enough time to fly before being overtaken on Sol 708. This game of cat and mouse repeated itself several more times over the next few flights, with the helicopter operations team eventually setting a new record for flight frequency. While the helicopter team typically hopes to fly as often as one week, they ultimately completed four flights, 42 to 46, in the space of just nine days. Taken together, these incredible efforts allowed the helicopter to stay ahead of the rover all the way up to the Delta, arriving at the destination while holding a respectable two-sole lead on Perseverance. A number of issues, including communication failures, anomalies with the rover, and a recurrence of a known helicopter camera issue, have since conspired to prevent NASA from getting advanced reconnaissance of a specific area. NASA was quoted saying, This was just the opening chapter of what has the potential to be an epic kilometers-long race on the Red Planet. In the over two years Ingenuity has been on the Martian surface, it has performed a total of 50 flights, each trying more ambitious routes. This information and data have given NASA the confidence to start developing a few new Martian helicopter designs. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.